Hi, my name's Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show how to use StatCrunch to calculate a multiple regression equation for a quantitative outcome variable. The first thing you need to do is get online and get logged into StatCrunch.com. And then, once you're there, log into your account. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to use a data set that already exists in StatCrunch. And so I'm going to come up here to Explore. I'm going to click on the little triangle next to it and say Explore Data. Once that comes up, I'm going to come over here and search for a data set that I've already used before. Because I've already used it, it pops up as soon as I type the first letter. It's YMS Table 1.15. And I press search, and it's this one right here with the picture of a high school. Click on the picture, and this brings up a data set with 51 rows, uh, one row for each state and the District of Columbia, and gives average statistics on each one about for each uh, locality for population, average SAT verbal and math scores, percent of students taking the test, uh, students with no high school diploma, teacher pay. If I extend this a little bit, you can see that means in thousands, the region. Uh, population over 65, and so on. What I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to build an equation for SAT math scores that involves the teacher pay, the percent of students taking the test, as well as the population. Now to do this, I come up here to Stat, down to Regression, to Multiple Linear. The linear part is because it's going to try to fit a straight line through the predicted values for the SAT math scores. We're going to use several or multiple variables to predict that outcome. So I click on multiple linear. And what I do is I'm going to select my outcome variable. That's the Y variable, the one that would be going up the side of a uh, scatter plot. And that will be SAT math scores in this case. Then I'm going to select several uh, X variables or predictor variables. Um, by holding down the control key. On my Mac, it's the Apple key, while I click on them. So, for instance, I have the population. I'm going to take the percent of students taking the test and uh, teacher pay in thousands of dollars. That's enough for right now. I'm not going to do any selection statements or any uh, grouping by different categories. So I'm going to hit Next. And the only option I have here is to save what are called the residuals. Um, which can be helpful for more sophisticated analyses. We're not going to deal with that. So really all I need to do now is press Calculate. And what I get here is a relatively large table. I'm going to uh, expand it just a little bit to give a little more white space behind it. And we have up here multiple linear regression results. And the dependent variable, or the outcome variable, is the average SAT math score for each locality. The independent variables, or the predictor variables, are population, percent taken, and teacher pay in thousands of dollars. Um, the first one, parameter estimates, tells me if I'm going to write an equation, the intercept would be 5.31. The uh, regression coefficient for population in thousands is a very small number. That's the E minus uh, 4 means uh, 10 to the negative fourth power makes it you know several decimal places it's negative that's what you need to know for right now and then the percent taking is also negative 1.27 and the idea here is that for each step for each percentage point up in a percentage of students taking the test the average SAT math score will go down about one and a quarter uh, points Finally, this one, teacher pay, is 1.37. It says for every $1,000 increase in teacher pay, you would expect an increase in SAT math scores of 1.37. Uh, coming over to the far column, where it says p-value, this is a probability value from a null hypothesis significance test. And the idea here is it starts with an assumption that the regression coefficient, uh, the intercept of the slopes over here, uh, is zero in the overall population. And then if the number we have over here is something other than zero, that is due to random fluctuation. And this number says, well, if it's zero, and if the only reason it's different is uh, random fluctuation, then how often 
would we get a coefficient this big or bigger? And the idea here is if it's a very small number for the p-value, if it's less than 5%, which would be 0, 05, then it is very unlikely to get it through random fluctuation, and rather it is likely that it is a real non-zero reliable number. So the first one, the intercept, which uh, says it's extremely unlikely to get this random fluctuation. It's actually impossible in an SAT score to have an average below 400. So there's no surprise there. Uh, the second one for population times 1,000, uh, the p-value is 0.3939, which is uh, much higher than 05. It says there's about a 39% chance of getting something this big You know, when you have random fluctuation in a population where the coefficient is zero. On the other hand, the next two are substantially lower than 05, which leads us to believe that those coefficients are reliable. Now, there is a very important uh, caveat in all this, is that these coefficients are only valid in the context of each other. You may recall from an earlier analysis that we looked at the association between just teacher pay and SAT math scores, and it was negative. That is, in states where the teacher pay was higher, average SAT scores were lower. Uh, here, it's the exact opposite, but that's only because the equation is also taken into consideration the population of the locality and the percent of students taking the test, even though the population is not a statistically significant variable in this equation. Now, coming down to the bottom, this one talks about the three predictor variables together, how well they predict the outcome. And the number here we're looking at, 0, 0, 0, 0001, less than, says it's a very good predictor, meaning it is reliably different from zero. In terms of the actual strength of the predictor, the number we want to come down here is this one right here, r squared. r is the symbol for a correlation coefficient, and when it's with a capital R, that usually means what's called a multiple correlation, where you have several variables correlating with one particular outcome variable, which is the case here. The uh, R squared can go from 0 to 1, and it is interpreted as the proportion of variance in the outcome variable that can be accurately predicted by the predictor variables. And in this case, it's 79%, which is astoundingly high. And what this tells us is that if we know the teacher pay and the percent of students taking the test and the population, uh, collectively, we can predict 79% of variance in average SAT math scores for these uh, 51 localities. The R squared adjusted is a slightly lower thing that takes into consideration the number of predictors and observations, but that's something we can deal with another time if it comes up. Anyhow, the point here is that we have a good equation. It gives a very high predictive level. Um, coming over here, we can see that most of it will come from percent taking the students and from teacher pay. We could do this again without population uh, because it's not significant here, but this is good enough for right now.